on the eve of Islam, the Arabs, even if they were primarily pagan, would have known about Judaism and Christianity, would have been familiar with some of their beliefs. And this is obvious when you read the Quran, right? When the Quran talks about Abraham or Noah uh, or even David or Solomon, it doesn't introduce them as if it would be new for its pagan Arab audience, right? There once upon a time there was a person named Abraham and he lived such and such, right? It doesn't tell the story like that. Uh, it assumes that its audience generally knows who Abraham is, generally knows who Noah is, generally knows who Jesus is. And that makes sense because they were trading with Jews and Christians. They encountered Jews and Christians wherever they went. So it wasn't news to them, right? They already were familiar uh, with, this, um, with these religions. <clears throat> the pagan culture in Arabia is described to us as being one that was often centered around shrines, particularly cubic or square-shaped shrines that would have been established in various parts of Arabia. And as you know, many of the Arabs were either fully or semi-nomadic, and as they traveled around uh, to do the various things that they did in Arabia, uh, they would stop and pay homage at the shrines. And one of those shrines uh, was, of course, the Kaaba. I'm sure it didn't look like this, <laughs> but uh, was the Kaaba in Mecca, right? a cubic shrine. It predates, as many of you probably know, predates the coming of Islam. Right? When Muhammad is born in Mecca, the Kaaba is already there. It's already the center of pilgrimage. And the pilgrimage rites are not terribly different from the pilgrimage rites that will eventually develop uh, in Islam. So the Kaaba was a very important shrine in Arabia. There was a pilgrimage festival that took place in the last month of the year, just as the Islamic pilgrimage takes place in the last month of the Islamic calendar. Uh, people would come, they would go around the Kaaba. Right? Um, and so the, the Kaaba already existed. But when Muhammad was born, the Kaaba was a shrine that was functioning as a pagan shrine. Right. The sources tell us that there were idols on its roof, there were idols inside, there were idols around the Kaaba, because when people would come from around Arabia to Mecca, they would come and they would put their idols right, in the shrine. Right. So, why is it that Muslims would have taken over a pagan shrine and made it uh, something, recognized it as the house uh, metaphorically speaking, of the one God. Why? I'm just trying to see. Because if you know. Abraham had built it as the house, the first house of God. Thank you. Uh, I don't want like to tell you things that you already know. That's why I'm asking. So yes, um, uh, uh, the Muslim tradition says that this original uh, building was built by Abraham. This is mentioned in the Quran. Islamic tradition beyond the Quran uh, says that the Kaaba actually first came down with Adam. Right, that, that God sent it down so that Adam could go around it so he wouldn't feel so lonely for watching the, the angels go around the throne of God. Right? But that's not Quranic. That's part of a broader Islamic tradition. The Islamic tradition says it was, it was built um, by Abraham. And they connect it to the story that you'll be familiar with from the Bible. Right? Abraham has uh, two sons. He has Ishmael with his uh, slave wife, Hagar. And he has uh, Isaac with Sarah, and eventually Sarah wants Ishmael and Hagar to go away. And so in the, in the biblical story, Abraham just sends them away to, does anyone know? Where does it say he sends them? Oh. The wilderness. The wilderness. The wilderness. The wilderness. <laughs> All right, yeah. <laughs> uh, so he sends them to the wilderness. Uh, but for Muslims, um, Abraham doesn't send them any. Abraham, in fact, doesn't just send them, he takes them. And he takes them not just anywhere, but he takes them to Mecca. And there, he leaves them there, but the, Quran, the, the Islamic tradition says that Abraham continued to visit uh, uh, his wife and his son in Mecca. And there, with his son, when he was older, he builds the Kaaba on God's instructions, right? And he's instructed to go round the Kaaba counterclockwise, which is exactly uh, how Muslims do it today and how apparently the pagans did it as well. Okay. 
So from the Islamic point of view, the Kaaba was originally an Abrahamic monotheistic shrine that by the time Muhammad was born had fallen into paganism, had become part of the pagan tradition. That original Abrahamic monotheism has, had been corrupted. Um, but the Abrahamic connection is really important. And so um, as some of you may know, uh, all of the rites that are connected with the Hajj, with the Muslim pilgrimage, all reenact elements of Abraham's life and Abraham's story as known from the Muslim perspective. So when Muslims go around uh, the Kaaba seven times, that's because Abraham was instructed to do that. And the Quran instructs him to go around it. Uh, when Muslims run, another uh, uh, rite that they do is they run between these two uh, rocks of Safa and Marwa. And when they do, they are reenacting uh, uh, Hajar, Hagar's desperate run, uh, going back and forth looking for water as she and her son were about to die of thirst. When they go and they stand at the plain of Arafat, they are going to the place where they believe Abraham took his son to be slaughtered. When they cast stones at the pillars, and they cast stones, it, it, the pillars represent Satan, and so they're throwing the stones at Satan. Uh, that represents the fact that when Abraham was going to slaughter his son, and by the way, in the Quranic story, Ishmael's fully aware, well, it doesn't say it's Ishmael, I should say it's his son. Muslims believe it's Ishmael, but the Quran doesn't say which son it is. Um, that, uh, uh, that his son is fully aware of what's happening. Right? Abraham says, I had a dream that I should slaughter you. What do you think? Or literally, it says, what do you think? Can you imagine your father? Um, anyway, so, um, so both father and son know what they're doing is they're on their way to carry this out. Satan tries to tempt them away from following God's uh, rules. And so Abraham and his son pick up stones and they throw them at Satan as a way of sort of um, uh, not only making him go away, but also uh, building up their own resolve to do this very difficult thing. Uh, and the final act that really closes the, the pilgrimage for Muslims is the slaughtering of an animal. And again, that represents God substituting a ram for Abraham's son, right? so he didn't have to slaughter his son. So all of the, the rites of the, of the Hajj are connected specifically with Abraham.